Mr. Ed and Mrs. Kelly, ladies and gentlemen of the Marine Corps, I'm honored to join you for this traditional ceremony commemorating the founding of the Marine Corps 211 years ago. Now, if I was talking about my own birthday, I would be using a different term here and referring to this as the 172nd anniversary of your 39th birthday. <laughs> but I wish I could be with every Marine today to say how grateful America is for all that the Marines have given over the years and give today in the defense of freedom. Yes, in these 211 years, whenever America has called, the few and the proud have been there. In places with names like Bellow Wood, the Argonne Forest, Guadalcanal, Saipan, Okinawa, the Chosin Reservoir, Quezon and Grenada, from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. The men of the United States Marine Corps have fought with a consistency of courage and skill unparalleled in the history of man. Everywhere they've landed, those of the eagle, the globe, and the anchor have taken with them a spirit that all the world knows today and respects. As Ernie Pyle, the legendary World War II war correspondent, wrote, the source of that spirit is that a Marine just plain considers himself a better soldier than anybody else. And he might have added, the Marines have never given anyone any reason to think differently. The Marines have always hit the beaches hard. They never leave their men on the battlefield. And let me just say, that's not only a Marine tradition. In Southeast Asia, we will write no final chapters. We will close no books until we have a return of all who may be alive, a fullest accounting of all those missing in action and repatriation of the remains of those who died serving our nation. Like the Marines, America will not leave its men on the battlefield. So yes, whether raising the flag over Iwo Jima or in the daily duty of guarding our embassies around the world, the Marine Corps spirit has been an inspiration to generations of Americans. And the Marine Corps strength has been among our surest guarantees of America's security around the world. The Corps today is almost 200,000 strong, a far cry from that band that the Corps' first commandant, Captain Samuel Nichols, first recruited at Tone Tavern in Philadelphia in the winter of 1775. I saw for myself what the Corps has become when I visited the Paris Island graduation this past June, and the commander told me that today's young recruits are the best he's ever seen. To me, that's saying a lot, because I know a few past recruits. I could come pretty close to mustering a platoon of them just by calling a cabinet meeting. The Marine Corps' motto is Semper Fidelis, always faithful. It's a motto, it's also a tradition. A tradition as old as our blessed Republic and as young as the newest Marine. A tradition of which all Americans are proud. And so, to all who are first to fight for right and freedom, America today says, thank you, happy birthday, and God bless you. And I know there's a cake awaiting, but also there is a general awaiting. General Kelly. Thank you, Mr. President. This traditional cake cutting ceremony is repeated thousands of times around the globe on the birthday of our Corps. The first piece of cake normally goes to the oldest Marine. But since neither Don Regan nor George Schultz will admit to this unique distinction, today we'll present it to Sergeant Major Robert Cleary, the Sergeant Major of the United States Marine Corps, and the oldest active duty enlisted Marine present today. The second piece will go to our youngest Marine, Lance Corporal Michael Abrams, with a sincere wish that one day he will be around to receive his piece of cake as the oldest Marine. And the final piece of cake goes to a very special person, a very special person in my life, one without whom I would not be here today, and one who truly represents 
to all America the importance that our Marine Corps places in our families. And that's Barbara, my wife of 35 years and 35 moves. This is my final Marine Corps birthday on active duty, Mr. President. I've been a Marine all of my adult life, but wouldn't change a minute of it. When my status changes on the muster roll to retired, one of my most treasured memories will be your personal friendship and your steadfast support. You are truly an inspiration to all Americans, particularly those special few who have earned the title United States Marine. May I have my sword, please? Time for the horse cavalry to retreat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 